All right, what is up, everybody? That's right, the wait is over. <laughs> Hello, I am so glad to be back, you guys, and I am just super, super pumped for today's video. And thank you for your patience. I know you, uh, a lot of you have been waiting and waiting, and I uh, just had a real busy day today. Had work, you know, hit the gym for a little while, had meet the parent night at my kid's school. A lot going on today, but finally I got a chance to sit down this evening and make this video the long-awaited rapture clues that are revealed in the prophecy of Daniel. So guys, let's go ahead and just jump right into this. I am super, super excited to share with you uh, what I have been studying in the Word of God. So are you ready? Let's go. Let's jump right into this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, uh, I want to just recap the feast days because that is a very important part to everything we're going to be studying as it relates to the prophecy in Daniel. Okay, so the feast days in Leviticus 23, God lays out his appointed times. Okay, and that word in the Greek is moed. They are appointed times given by God. And there are seven of them. And what we must understand is the seven feasts are a foreshadow or picture of the coming of the Lord. Four of them, the spring feasts, have already been fulfilled. That was fulfilled by Jesus Christ's first coming. Now, the next three, we are still waiting to be fulfilled, and they will be fulfilled by Jesus' second coming, okay? And so we're going to just recap this very shortly because it is the foundation of everything we're about to get into when it relates to the book of Daniel. All right, so many of you already know this. If there are any people out here that are just watching for the first time, welcome. Uh, this is for you, all right? So first festival is Passover. And Jesus fulfilled Passover when he died on the cross. Now, what, it, what we must understand here, God is a God of patterns, okay? And what you're going to notice about all these feasts is that God fulfilled the feast on the very same day. Jesus Christ died on the very same day as Passover. The very next day is unleavened bread. What happened in unleavened bread? Jesus was buried in the tomb. And then first fruits, Jesus Jesus rose again from the dead. Remember, the Bible calls Jesus Christ the first fruits of many brethren. In other words, he is the first one to resurrect from the dead to live forever, never to die again in a glorified state. Jesus Christ was the first one to do that, and he will have many brethren. Of course, that will be us. All right, so those are the first three feasts. Now, after first fruits, 50 days later came Pentecost. What happened 50 days later after Jesus' resurrection? That was the same day that Jesus sent the promise of the Spirit. So the promise of the Spirit was fulfilled on Pentecost. Now, that's the first four feasts. They have all been fulfilled in order and on their exact day. Now we are in a time called the time of the Gentiles. We are in this waiting period. We are waiting for the fulfillment of the next feast, which will be the Feast of Trumpets. Now, Scripture tells us plainly how God is going to fulfill the remaining three feasts. Before I get there, you have to understand if God is going to fulfill, God is not just going to fulfill four and not fulfill all seven, okay? He is a God of perfect patterns. So he has already fulfilled the uh, four. We're waiting on the three. So, of course, the next thing we are waiting on for the body of Christ, the next big event we are waiting on prophetically is the rapture of the church. And Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52, that in the moment, in a twinkling of an eye, the last at the last trump, that is when we are going to receive our glorified bodies. And that happens at the rapture of the church. Now, very quickly. When Paul was writing about the last trump, he was making a direct reference to the Feast of Trumpets because that's what they called the last trump. That 100th shofar blast was called or known as the last trump. 
Okay, so he was making a direct reference to that. Many people confuse the last trump with the book of Revelation, where it talks about the seven trumpets in Revelation. Well, what you have to understand is God gave that revelation to John. OK, he did not give a revelation to Paul about those judgment trumpets. Those are two different categories of trumpets. You had the feast of trumpets, the 100 shofar blasts. But then in Revelation, God is talking about judgment trumpets that have to do with wrath. OK. Paul wrote Corinthians way before John wrote Revelation. Paul wrote Corinthians, I believe, somewhere in the 50s. And John didn't write Revelation until about 95. OK, so Paul knew nothing about the judgment trumpets in Revelation. He was not referring to that. So that is very, very key to understand there with that. Now, Moving forward, the next feast that will be fulfilled after the Feast of Trumpets, the rapture with the Feast of Trumpets, is the Day of Atonement. Now, this is a key one. For this one, to show you how God, I just want to show you scripturally how God is going to fulfill these feasts. All right. Now, I'm going to read to you Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. Watch what God says. He says, 70 weeks are determined for your people. He's talking about the people of Israel. Seventy weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make recon reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy and anoint the most holy. So this is the timeline for Israel. Seventy weeks. We the last week will be the tribulation period. Remember, the week is a week in the Hebrew is seven years. All right. So with this 70 weeks, he's going to finish the transgression, make an end of sins, make reconciliation for iniquity. This word reconciliation for iniquity, when you look it up in the Greek, it means to atone. OK, God is going to restore Israel. He is going to atone for the sins of Israel, and he's going to do that physically. That's what people have to understand. See, God made us atonement on the cross for our to, to forgive us of our sins for everybody. But this particular atonement is a physical atonement with physical bodies, the nation of Israel, those who have accepted Christ and will be with him in his kingdom. Now for that, um, let me read another scripture that's going to help elaborate this point. This is very, under, um, very crucial that you understand this. Ezekiel chapter 20 talks about how God is going to restore Israel. Watch what it says in verse 33 of Ezekiel chapter 20. God says, as I live, says the Lord, surely with a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm and with fury poured out, I will rule over you. He's talking about Israel. I will bring you out from the peoples and gather you out of the countries where you are scattered. Remember, they're going to get scattered during the tribulation period. OK, OK with a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm, and with fury poured out. And verse 35, and I will bring you into the wilderness of the peoples, and there I will plead my case with you face to face. You see that? God physically, Jesus Christ, is going to be on the earth dealing with physical Israel face to face. Now watch this. Just as I pled my case with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so I will plead my case with you, says the Lord. What does he mean by plead case? Well, the Bible tells us in verse 37, I will make you pass under the rod and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. I will purge the rebels from among you and those who transgress, transgress against me. I will bring them out of the country where they dwell, but they shall not enter the land of Israel. Then you will know that I'm the Lord. So here we have God giving further details about this atonement that's going to take place. When he comes back, Jesus Christ, to set up his kingdom, he is going to gather Israel together in Jerusalem. He's going to deal with them face to face. He's going to bring them under the rod. Or in other words, he's going to bring them under inspection. See, what people don't understand is not all Israel is going to be saved. And well, let me make sure I help you understand what I mean by that. There will be Israelites that still did not accept Christ, okay? Those are the rebels that he's talking about that he is going to purge away. 
You see, on the Day of Atonement, Aaron had to take two goats. One goat was slain for the sacrifice and another goat, the sins of the people were put on that goat and that goat was sent away in the wilderness. On the Day of Atonement, God is going to pull the Israelites together. He's going to allow those who've accepted him and have come to Christ during the tribulation. They're going to be the, the ones that are left, the one third left that will be considered all of Israel. Okay. But those other Israelites that still rejected Christ, they are the rebels and God is going to send them away. So you see, all of this is going to happen on the day of atonement. This is how God is going to physically not just spiritually, physically atone for the sins of Israel, which is different from the spiritual atonement that we have all received when we placed our faith in Christ. OK, so I hope you understand that little nugget for you there. But I had to go into that so that you understand what we're about to get into. All right. So Feast of Trumpets will be fulfilled by the rapture. The Day of Atonement will be fulfilled when Jesus Christ returns and physically atones for the sins of Israel, when he deals with them face to face. That is going to happen on an appointed time, the Day of Atonement. OK, now. Finally, we have the Feast of Trumpets. Excuse me, <laughs> not the Feast of Trumpets. The last feast is Tabernacles, all right? Tabernacles. The word tells us exactly how Christ is going to fulfill Tabernacles, all right? So very quick, I'm going to go to the book of Zechariah, and I'm going to read chapter 14, verse 16. It says, And it shall come to pass that everyone who is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and keep the feast of tabernacles. So that's the final thing or piece to be fulfilled. Tabernacles, that is the, in the millennial reign, everybody in the, on the face of the world, every nation will be required to go to the temple in Jerusalem and worship Christ. OK, all of these feasts will be fulfilled by his second coming. Now, what does all this have to do with rapture clues? All right. So I had to build a foundation for you. Now we're going to move on to the next part because, oh, I'm so excited about this. The book of Daniel and we've gone through some things in Daniel before. OK, but I found something recently that just boom, just blew me away. OK. In the book of Daniel, Daniel is given a vision and Gabriel explains the vision and Gabriel raises his right hand and swears before God the amount of days that are to pass from the abomination of desolation when the Antichrist defiles the temple, sets his, his, his um, image up in the temple to be worshipped, which happens in the middle of the tribulation until the last day. Okay. Now watch this. What we must first, before I go into that, what you must understand about the last day is this. All right. Here's what the book of Daniel tells us about the last day in the book of Daniel chapter eight, verse 19. Here's Gabriel talking to Daniel. He says, look, I am making known to you what shall happen in the latter time of the indignation or tribulation. For at the appointed time, the end shall be. That is a very important clue there. God is telling us, Gabriel is telling Daniel, that the last day will be on an appointed time. This word in the Greek is moed. It's the same word that is used in Ezekiel, excuse me, not Ezekiel, in Leviticus, when God gave the feast days, okay? Moed means an appointed time. There are seven of them. He is telling Daniel that the last day will be a feast day. The last day will be an appointed time. You get that by understanding key words, moed, all right? With that said, that means from the middle of the tribulation, to the last day, that last day will fall on a feast day. Which day will it be? Well, it will be the day of atonement because when the Bible tells us in Daniel that on that last day, that's when, when, Christ, re when Christ returns, 
one of the things he is going to do, one of the first things he's going to do is atone for the sins of Israel. That's going to happen after the rapture and before uh, the tab tabernacles. That's what Christ is going to do when he returns. All right. So what, exa what exactly did Daniel say? Well, uh, excuse me, uh, verse 12, excuse me, chapter 12 is what I meant to say. Verse 11. Here is the focal part when we're talking about clues for the rapture. Daniel chapter 12, verse 11. It says, and from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. So walk with me here. From the middle, basically what this is saying is from the middle of the tribulation to the last day, there will be 1,290 days. That's a fact. That's what the word says. Okay. Now, when you couple that fact from scripture with the feast days, here's the line of thinking here. The tribulation altogether from the middle, okay, from the middle of the tribulation to the end is 1,290. Well, from the beginning of the tribulation, remember that's that first three and a half years is 1,260 days. Then you have the 1,290 days at the end of that. I believe because the tribulation actually is 1,260 days and then the, you have the extra 30 days. OK, so what I believe is going to happen is Christ is going to return at the 1,260 and then 30 days later, he's going to atone for Israel's sins. I'm sure there's a lot for Christ to do between that 30 day time period. You know, cleaning up the earth, re renovating it, everything, all, getting it ready for his kingdom. OK, so all of this is in scripture. I, I don't want this video to be too long, but when you read Daniel chapter eight, it tells us uh, very clearly what how well, excuse me, Daniel chapter seven and eight. It tells us how God is going to be the one to put the stop to the Antichrist. We know that the tribulation is going to be. 1,260, that's the first half, and then another 1,260, which is the second half. But the end does not come till 30 days after that, okay? So when you put all of that together from the beginning of the tribulation or rapture of the church, which I believe is going to start the tribulation, to the very last day, that's a total of 2,550 days, all right. Now, I feel I'm talking a little fast. It's a video. You can rewind it. <laughs> OK, now walk with me here. Walk with me here. When we're some of you probably already know where I'm going. When we're looking at the feast days, what that means, according to what Daniel lays out, the book of Daniel tells us. From for, there will be a complete 2550 days from the beginning of the tribulation to the last day. So that means if these things have to fall on feast days, this is how I'm going to be watching for the rapture. On a feast of trumpets holiday, I'm trying to see which time span of seven years will, when you go from the feast of trumpets in any given year, and then you go seven years in the future to the day of atonement, I'm trying to see in which seven year time span will that equal 2,550 days, because that's what it lines up in Daniel. That's what I'm trying to see. Now, before when I looked at this, you know, you know, because, you know, at one point when we were looking at the rapture to happen in two, back in 2017, we I was the way I've interpreted was maybe there would be a gap between the tribulation or oh, excuse me between the rapture and the tribulation okay and so when i revisit it i started to revisit that because there are there are dates and days that when you calculate from feast of trumpets and seven years into the future to day of atonement there are days there are time spans that equal exactly 2550 days and so when I looked at that, I was like, whoa, <laughs> OK. And so I'm going to share that with you right now. 
what I did, I calculated starting with 2018 to in the future, with seven years in the future, will be 2025. Is that right? Let me look at my notes here. Yeah, 2025. I, from Feast of Trumpets 2018 to Day of Atonement 2025. And I said, okay, how many days is that? I wrote it down. Then I went 2019, Feast of Trumpets, to 2026, Day of Atonement. And I said, okay, how many days is that? And I wrote it down. I did that from this year all the way until the next 20 years. All right? Now, the very, here, here it is, here it is. <laughs> the next time that the years will line up or be a possibility for the with, with uh, for the prophecy that Daniel lays out in scripture the next year where it lines up is 2019 okay 2019 feast of trumpets 2019 it doesn't line up for this year okay now that does not mean, get what I'm saying. I'm not saying the rapture can't happen in 2018. I don't know, <laughs> okay? And I'm not saying the rapture is going to happen in 2019. I'm not saying the rapture is going to happen on any year. I'm just explaining to you what I'm looking at with the Bible and comparing it with dates. And I am showing you how I am making my list of, okay, this, is, this may be a high watch type of situation or a high watch year, okay? So that's how I'm doing that. I'm just laying out the facts for you. I don't know when the rapture is going to happen. However, I do see some high clues. OK, so if you're looking at this year from 2018 to 2025, Feast of Trumpets 2018, Day of Atonement 2025, that's a total of somewhere between 2,579 days and 2,581 days. Now, I have a two-year span because we don't know when, you never know, you know, you don't know the day or hour that the actual Feast of Trumpets will be celebrated, remember? Because it's the holiday that no one knows the day or hour. They wait for that first slither of the new moon to appear, and it, we don't know exactly when it'll happen, but it's a two-year, uh, excuse me, a two-day time span. So I had to look for years where the two-day time span will be around the 2,550. And the next one comes up in 2019. From 2019, Feast of Trumpets, to 2026, we're looking at a time span of 2,548 days to 2,550 days. So if the slither of the moon appears very early, and I'm talking about from the eve of the Feast of Trumpets, the, the uh, sundown, the previous day, Feast of Trumpets, then that would be exactly 2,550 days. So that's what I'm looking at. That's what I'm looking at. Okay. And if the rapture doesn't happen on Feast of Trumpets in 2019, then I would be looking at the very next one. Okay. Now, another interesting thing here is the fig tree prophecy, because you know, I put a video out there. I put some other videos explaining the fig tree prophecy. And when Jesus said this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place, we'll say, OK, well, what did God mean by this generation? And I, be I still believe God is talking about the generation that saw the fig tree bud. Remember, the fig tree is, is what God used as an illustrative uh, element for Israel. All right. So the fig tree budded in 1948 when they came back into their land. They were declared a nation in 1947. They came back into their land in 1948. So in Psalms chapter 90, verse 10, the Bible tells us that a generation is from 70 to 80 years. So to me, it, it stands to reason that you had 80 years to 1948. That's 2028. That means the last day has to have come by at least 2028. And if that's the case, it seems to reason to me that the rapture would have to happen on a Feast of Trumpets at least by 2021. That's how I, that's what I look at that, okay? But guess what? In 2020 to 2027, the numbers don't line up. We're looking at 2,578 to 2,580 days. Then from Feast of Trumpets 2021 to Feast of Trumpets 2028, 
we're looking at 2,580 days to 2,582 days. So it doesn't line up with the book of Daniel. And at this moment, I just, where I am today, I just don't see there being a gap, this big 30 day, 40 or 50 day gap between when the rapture happens and the start of the tribulation. Why? Because when we look at uh, Timothy, well, excuse me, not Timothy, 2 Thessalonians, let me look at this real quick. I didn't plan on reading this, but I'm going to go ahead and read it for you anyway. Uh, 2 Thessalonians, and we're going to look at chapter 2 real quick. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it talks about the great apostasy. Okay, in verse 6, it says, And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. Verse 7, For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. So in other words, look, the Bible said lawlessness is already at work. In other words, Satan would have been started the tribulation period if he could. He is itching. He is just waiting to pounce to get this thing started, but he can't. Why? Because the ministry of the Holy Spirit, who is the restrainer, the ministry of the Holy Spirit through the body of Christ, through spiritual warfare, is keeping the enemy back. Is, is, is keeping the enemy from doing and just fully leashing out all the evil that he could potentially leash out. Well, once the, minis once the rapture happens, the ministry of the Holy Spirit in spiritual warfare will cease and Satan will be released to leash out his full fury on the earth. I don't see it being a whole 30, 40 days before that starts. I think as soon as he's released, he, boom, he's going to be in that thing going. OK, so that's how I see that today. Uh, so that's how I'm rapture watching at this point. I'm looking to see, OK, from Feast of Trumpets to seven years future Day of Atonement, which one gives us the possibility Given or take two days, because we don't know when that Feast of Trumpets will be within that two days. Which one give us the potential of landing 2,550 days? That's how I do it. The next year where it lines up is Feast of Trumpets 2019. Okay. Now, the rapture may not happen in 2019. And I could be totally wrong. And the rapture may happen before 2019. Okay. So just please take this with a grain of salt. However... What I have done here is I've calculated, you know, it's the only one that lines up before 2028. It's the only one. So I'm like, oh, my God, Lord, this let this be it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. So this is the only one that lines up before 2028. Now, if the rapture does not happen by uh, 2021, which means we would go past 2028 for all these things to be fulfilled, then I would have to rethink, okay, Lord, what did you mean by generation? Okay. So something, a little interesting nugget here, and this video is getting a little bit too long, so I'm about to cut it off, but a real, just a quick, interesting nugget in some, some of the things I've been thinking. You know, I looked up the census uh, for the amount of people that are still alive from 1940, who were born in 1948 and are still alive today. And in just U.S. census, it says that 75 percent of the people born in 1948 are still alive. So that means, OK, well, maybe that means if for a generation to pass away, maybe that means that all the people have died. That's another way to look at it. OK. So that could be 100 years. It may, be not, may not be 80. Oh, Lord, I hope it's not that long. <laughs> but it could be. It could be. It could be 100. OK. So with that said, I calculated the seven year time spans from now all the way up to 2048, which would be 100 years from 1948. And so that's now to the next 20 years. I have calculated the time spans for every single year. And so the next one that lines up is 2019. And there are four more. OK, there are four more that line up. That's it. Just four more. Giving the expectation that it could be 100 years. All right. A generation could be 100 years. OK, so there are only four more. So I'm going to type this up. 
uh, this chart up that I made with the time spans and the exact number of days for every year from now to the next 20 years. OK, I will gladly. I'm not going to just read all that. It's just too much <laughs> for a video. OK, however, I would love to share it with you. Uh, if you would like to see that and I'm going to type it up, you want me to email it to you have no problem. Just you know, shoot me an email. I'll have my email in the description for you to click on and send me an email. OK, now I do ask this, though. OK, I do ask this. You know, um, I've done this type of thing before when I've asked people to just, you know, hey, just shoot me an email. I'll send it to you, you know, with other charts I've done before. And I got to be honest, it was a little overwhelming. <laughs> OK, I'm very thankful for the platform God has given me on YouTube. But I got to be honest, I am one person. I do not have a secretary or anything like that. So it's very hard to respond to like, you know, 500, 600 people, you know, sending an email back and forth to them. So this is what I'm going to do. All right. I'm also I'm going to have a link on there. I'm going to have my PayPal link and my Venmo link. I'm asking that you donate a dollar. OK, <laughs> if you want to do more than that, we are welcome. But I'm just asking for a dollar. If you donate a dollar, I'll send it to you. And the reason I'm doing that is not about the money. But if I just if I just tell everybody, hey, email me, everybody's going to email me. OK, but if you got to put some skin in the game, if you got to donate a dollar, <laughs> then it, it won't be as many people asking for it. And I realize that and that will be a little less work for me. OK, and I feel you know, if, I, if people donate a dollar, then that will be less people that are actually requesting. And that will be something I feel that will be a little bit more manageable for me where I can definitely get the email out to everyone who requested it. All right. So I got a chart here from every year from now to 20 years later, which will be 100 years from 1948. There are five years, including 2019 and then four more after that, that line up. In the book of Daniel, we're talking about from Feast of Trumpets one year, seven years in the future day of atonement, equaling 2000, possibly 2550 days. That's what I wanted to share with you guys. I think that is the biggest rapture clue we can look at when we're looking at the book of Daniel. Daniel rose his hand and swore to that. I mean, Gabriel rose his hand and swore these things. So he was this prophecy is true. We don't know which year the rapture is going to fall on, but whatever year it's going to be, I can guarantee it's going to line up to what God's word says about these uh, the timeline with these days. OK, so, guys, that's what I wanted to share with you. Hope you guys were blessed by this message. Stay tuned. Revelation series coming right up. We're going to get definitely go ahead and finish with the Revelation series. And I have so much more that we're going to get into. I'm so glad to be back with you guys on YouTube. Stay tuned for the next video. This is Cornelius Jones signing off. I love you guys in the Lord. Let's chat together. Let's grow together. Let's love together. Peace out.